Hey guys, I'm James, also known as Just Some Nerd, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made the cape for my 60s Adam West Batman costume. Welcome back guys. One of the first cosplays I ever did was Batman from the classic TV series. It was a show that I really loved as a little kid and I thought it would be a super fun character to cosplay. It gave me the opportunity to be silly and run around with the big bat bomb and the shark repellent bat spray and it's just such a fun character to cosplay and it always gets a really good reaction at cons. Recently I've been slowly upgrading my costume and the final step in those upgrades is making a new cape. For this project, I'm using the pattern from William Studio 2 off of Etsy. William Studio 2 is Chuck and Lane Williams, and they've been making replicas from the 60s Batman series for years. On their Etsy shop, you can find high-end replicas of Batman's cow, his utility belt, his cape, and more. I'll have a link to their store in the description, as well as anything else that I talk about in this video. In addition to the replicas, they also sell these patterns for the cape crime fighter and the Wonder Boy costumes that were drafted from the screen use props. This pattern is for the cape and the trunks and the cow, and it also includes templates for the belt, uh, the gloves and more. I had already used this pattern to make the gloves and the trunks for my costume, so the final step was making the cape. Rewinding a bit, the first thing I had to do was find fabric that matched. I already had my cowl, so I knew that I was going to use this, so I had to find fabric that matched. What I decided to use was a stretch knit fabric I found at Joann's. The screen used fabric was not this stretchy, and stretchy materials are hard to work with, but the colors matched so well, I thought that this was probably my best bet. Joann's is also really good with coupons, so if you wait for the right discount, you can probably get a really good deal. If this is a project that you're considering taking on, I actually have quite a bit of this fabric left over that I'm going to be looking to sell. So if you're interested, shoot me a message over on Facebook at Just Some Nerd. Now that we have our fabric, we can start cutting out our pattern. Since this is a long cape and we're going to be working with like nine yards of fabric, you're going to need to make sure you have plenty of space to work with. So for me, that meant working on the floor quite a bit. For this, I had some help from my cat, Cecil. He's pretty cute, but not very helpful. I also had some help from my mom on this project. If it wasn't for her, I would never have been able to figure out complicated sewing projects and wouldn't have been able to make a lot of the costumes that I have over the years. So huge thanks to her for all of her guidance when it comes to sewing. The cape is actually pretty simple. It's just four panels making up the outside and then the same four panels making up the lining for the cape. Once I have both the outside and the lining pieces cut out, I'm going to use two different colored threads to mark where the snaps go. The cape has a couple of snaps on the back that hold it in place. And now we're ready to start sewing. The first step is to sew the center back seam. And then we're going to repeat the same step for the lining pieces. The fabric I used is not supposed to be ironed, so I'm not going to be pressing it open as much as you would if you were using a different type of fabric. Here I have all four of the outside panels sewn together, so I'm going to try it on and see if it looks right. I think so far so good. The cape has a bit of a curve on the shoulder, so you have to be aware of that. The pattern calls for fusible bias tape along the neck edge and the hem edge of the cape. Uh, we didn't have the fusible bias tape, so we just used regular bias tape and stitched it in. This will help ensure that no stretching occurs on the fabric. And since we used this extra stretchy fabric, that really kind of helped us a lot when it came to pinning the front side and the back sides together. And before we sew the lining into the front of the cape, we're going to go ahead and hand stitch in these snaps. Now the pattern calls for what, one, two, three, four, five different snaps and I actually decided just to do two of them that hold the cape in place. I think the other ones are meant to attach the cape to the bodysuit, and I just decided I didn't want to mess with that. And now with the right sides together, I'm sewing the front of the cape to the lining of the cape, and I'm going to leave the neckline and the bottom scalloped edge unsewn for now. Once the front and the lining are sewn together, you're gonna to wanna to tack the seam allowance together on the inside of the garment. From the inside of the garment, match the lining of the cape seams to the back. Pin the seam allowance together from the inside of the cape and sew close to the seam stitches every three or four inches along the seam allowance. Don't tack the shoulders and stop tacking about 17 inches from the hem at the center back and six inches from the hem at the side seams. To finish the neck, you sew the neck binding to the neckline using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. 
and then understitch and press the binding to the inside of the cape. And then handpick stitch the neck binding, folding the edge through all the layers. And then add a large hook and eye to the neck for closing. I use the size 3. To finish the bottom of the cape, pin the hem of the cape to the lining along the scalloped edge and then sew them together 1 8 inch from the edge. And then using two threads through your needle, zigzag stitch along the edge to finish the hem. And then the final step is just to cut away a little bit of excess and clean up your edge. And now the only thing left to do is try everything on and see how it looks. Everything seems to have turned out pretty great and the fit is pretty good. I didn't really have to make any adjustments from the pattern, which is only one size since it was drafted from the screen use suit. And just for fun, here's a comparison picture between me and Adam West. If you guys are interested in more information on this costume, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm planning to do a breakdown of the entire costume next week. If you're watching this video from the future, that video is probably already up and I'll have a link to it at the end of this video. I hope this video was helpful for some of you guys looking to make your own Batman capes. I know obviously in this build it was for a 60s style Batman cape, but really you could use the same basic ideas for any sort of Batman cape. You just want to make it a little bit longer and obviously black if you're making a more modern version. But it's the same kind of basic like four panel scallop pattern. If you guys would like to see more pictures of my costume, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos. So I'll catch you guys later. Same bat time, same bat YouTube channel. See you guys.